are told by history books that the William Wilberforces, the Granville Sharps, the Anna Morse abolished slavery and slave trade. Isn't this questionable history? For how could they possibly be when we know too well that the juicy muscle of slave trade and slavery is abolished by the beneficiaries the same way colonizers would totally allow the African continent to Africans generated from the egg of colonial barbarity the foul called racism is hale and hearty, alive and kicking today in 2022. What a surprise. The evil grown by the tree of racism and color discrimination has raised its ugly head again in the war in Ukraine with fouls frightful and vile and here is where the pain lies that the institutions that should promote equal opportunity for all the institutions that should be defenders of the rights of every human being on this earth they are fanning the flames of this discreditable racist fire the great powers of the world the great global institutions of the world most of them, they have shown manifest disregard for wars and conflicts in Africa, Asia, and some parts of the Middle East. And hiddenly, surreptitiously, refuse the right to self-determination to oppressed peoples of these parts of the world. We are living witness to these happenings today. And now Ukraine occupies every frontline page in journals, newspapers, TV screens, and international political conference halls because Ukraine is European. Racism and its denunciation is a topic familiar in the theology of Pope Francis. He compares it to a virus that quickly mutates and instead of disappearing goes into hiding and lurks in waiting pope francis the pontiff did not leave the day assigned by the uno as an international day for the elimination of racial discrimination go by without inspiring words on that day his tweet adding the hashtags, fight racism, fratelli tutti, he tells us that, and I quote him, instances of racism continue to shame us for they show that our supposed social progress is not as real or definitive as we think. Ladies and gentlemen, the British Southern Cameroons popularly called Ambazonia, has for five years now been a killing field of the most atrocious genocide in living memory. Scant attention has been given them and their deaths and afflictions and sorrows and troubles are piling and not considered anything to consider a serious treatment by, let's say, the UNO or the great powers of the world. I daily see the involvement of the churches. My own home church, the Catholic church on the Ukrainian war. And I say kudos, it's a beautiful thing. The help to Ukraine is so breathtaking and, and the ecclesiastical leaders of the country I live in, for example, 
have issued a clarion call for immediate aid to those entering the borders from that particular side of the world. And aid is poured out each day from parish houses, specifically to Ukraine. And the borders are wide open, wide open for those people of Ukraine to enter. A wonderful thing. It has been so spontaneous and overwhelming. And I praise the spirit because it is a wonderful spirit, especially when a people are being disgraced by the troubles of war. And we welcome them, put them in our houses, find food for them to eat and prepare another future for them. The response to help has grown and is still growing. But here is the question. How could religious sentiments be this segregative when approaching human suffering? The spirit of assisting refugees is always a noble act of human charity. But when such charity carries with it the negation of the very idea which lies at the heart of charity, racist jingoism, the spiritual benefits of such endeavors in God's side, vanish. The Almighty is both of the Jews and the Gentiles, is both of the Christian and the pagan. Look at the world. Look at how the African refugee or immigrant is passed by neglected, ignored in our streets and cities in Europe. This continental apartheid is a disgrace, a slap in the face to global partnership and to the universal human family. Yes, the great parts of the world are back to the 14th century and the 15th century racist emasculation of the black race. Indeed, they have never ceased to enjoy the vomit once in a while when they wish to shed the hypocrisy and be true to their true selves. If I have a message for parents and moral instructors for moral institutions in the world, it is this. Teach your children or students or pupils that they are human beings, full human beings, and that it is blasphemous to not know. And that anyone who teaches them the contrary is a bully, a bigot, and a brigand. Teach them to be more involved with what lies inside each other's skin and not what is the color of each other's skin. Teach them to love the other human being, and this is most important. To love the other human being in the same way they love themselves passionately persistently, most of all, daringly. Teach them to realize that the value placed on the color of the skin is the most ridiculous, the most atrocious, and the most dangerous deception mankind has ever witnessed. Racism and discrimination, especially social discrimination, inflame Past social wounds intimidate the future of the unborn and render today unworkable. 